Welcome back. In this teaching video, I'm looking at 3.3, .3, the inverse normal distribution function. 3.3 .3 represents chapter 3, section 3 of the Pearson A-level Master Applied Maths Year 2 textbook. Let's go through the key fact of this section. For a given probability p, you can use the inverse normal distribution function on your calculator to find a value a such that probability x is less than a is equal to p, where x takes on a normal distribution with mean mu and variance sigma squared. Let's go through an example. Ladies and gents, in my example, I've got x takes on a normal distribution with mean 40 and variance 3 squared. So we know that the mean mu is equal 40, the variance sigma squared is equal 3 squared, hence the standard deviation sigma is the square root of 3 squared, which is 3. Find the value of a to two decimal places such that part a probability x is less than a is equal to 0 0.25. I'm going to illustrate the a and 0 0.25 on a bell-shaped curve. So here is my bell-shaped curve. The bell-shaped curve is centered at the mean mu, which is 40. Now we've got probability x is less than a is equal to 0 0.25. So the area to the left of a is a small area, it is 0 0.25, which means that I need to position my a somewhere over here. So that the area to the left is a small area, it is 0 0.25. Okay, so what we have is that the area to the left is equal 0 0.25, the standard deviation sigma is equal to 3, and the mean mu is equal to 40. I want to work out the value of A to two decimal places. So I'll be applying the inverse normal distribution function. We press menu, we scroll down to number 7 distribution, press equal, then press number 3 inverse normal, the area is 0 0.25, equal, the standard deviation is 3, equal, the mean is 40, equal. Press equal again and this is what you get. So to two decimal places, a is equal to 37.98. Using the inverse normal distribution function, we get that a is equal to 37.98 to two decimal places. Let's have a look at part b. So in part b, we've got probability x is less than a is equal to 0 0.75. I'm going to illustrate the a and the 0 0.75 on a bell-shaped curve. So here is my bell-shaped curve. Again, the bell-shaped curve is centered at the mean mu, which is 40. Probability x is less than a is equal to 0 0.75, which means that the area to the left of a is 0 0.75, which is somewhat of a large area. So where do we actually position the a? This time we're going to position the a somewhere over here. We know that this area to the left is 0 0.5, because the total area is 1, 1 divided by 2 is 0 0.5. So 0 0.75 is actually greater than 0 0.5. So that means the A has to be positioned somewhere here. So that the area to the left of A looks something like 0 0.75. So we've got that the area to the left of A is equal to 0 0.75. The standard deviation sigma is equal to 3. The mean mu is equal to 40. Now we must calculate the value of a to two decimal places using the inverse normal distribution function. Press menu, go on to number seven distribution, press equal, press number three inverse normal, the area is 0 0.75 equal the standard deviation is 3, equal, the mean is 40, equal. Press equal again, and you get that a is equal to 42.02 to two decimal places. Using the inverse normal distribution function, we get that a is equal to 42.02 to two decimal places. Let's have a look at part C. Ladies and gents, in part C, we've got probability x is more than a is equal to 0 0.4. The inverse normal distribution function is only valid for probability x is less than a. In other words, the area to the left of a. I'm going to start by illustrating the a and the 0 0.4 on a bell-shaped curve. 
So here is my bell-shaped curve. Again, the bell-shaped curve is centered at the mean mu, which is 40. We've got probability x is more than a is equal to 0 0.4. So the area to the right of a is 0 0.4. Now we know that this area to the right is 0 0.5. 0 0.4 is smaller than 0 0.5, so we must position the a somewhere over here. So that the area to the right of a is now 0 0.5. Four. Now, from this particular bell-shaped curve, we can see that the area to the left of A is going to be 1 take away 0 0.4. So this particular area over here is going to be 0 0.6. Okay, so I can shade that in. That's 0 0.6. So we can take that statement and we can write a new statement. And that statement is probability X is less than A is equal to 0 0.6. Okay, so now we can use the inverse normal distribution function because it satisfies the condition probability x is less than a. In other words, the area to the left of a. So we've got the area to the left of a is equal to 0 0.6. The standard deviation sigma is equal to 3. The mean mu is equal to 40. We can now calculate the value of a to two decimal places using the inverse normal distribution function. Press menu, go on to number seven, distribution, press equal, press number three, inverse normal, the area is 0 0.6, equal, the standard deviation is three, equal, the mean is 40, equal. Press equal again, and you get that a is equal to 40.76 to two decimal places. So using the inverse normal distribution function, we get that a is equal to 40.76 to two decimal places. This completes my example. Let's have a look at exam style question one. The distances traveled to work d kilometer by the employees at a large company are normally distributed with d takes on a normal distribution with mean 25 and variance seven squared. Ladies and gents, we know that the mean mu is equal to 25, the variance sigma squared is equal to 7 squared, hence the standard deviation sigma is equal to the square root of 7 squared, which is 7. For this population, find part A, the upper quartile. Let Q3 be the upper quartile. By definition of the upper quartile, we know that probability D is less than or equal to Q3 has to equal 75%. In other words, 0 0.75. Now for a normal distribution, the equal contributes to zero area. So I can actually delete the equal. Now I'm going to illustrate the Q3 and the 0 0.75 on a bell-shaped curve. Here is my bell-shaped curve. The bell-shaped curve is centered at the mean mu, which is 25. Probability D is less than Q3 is equal to 0 0.75. So the area to the left of Q3 is 0 0.75. We know that this area to the left is 0 0.5. 0 0.75 is greater than 0 0.5. So we must position the Q3 somewhere over here. So that the area to the left of Q3 looks something like 0 0.75. So we've got that the area to the left of Q3 is equal to 0 0.75. The standard deviation sigma is equal to 7. The mean mu is equal to 25. And so now we can work out the Q3 to two decimal places, for example, using the inverse normal distribution function. So Q3 to two decimal places would equal 29.72. Let's have a look at part B. This time we want to find the 30th percentile. So let P30 be the 30th percentile. By definition of the 30th percentile, we know that probability D is less than or equal to P30 is equal to 30%. In other words, 0 0.30. Now the equal for normal distribution contributes to zero area, so I can actually delete the equal. 
Now I'm going to represent the P30 and the 0 0.30 on a bell-shaped curve. So here is my bell-shaped curve. It is centered at the mean mu, which is 25. Probability d is less than P30 is equal to 0 0.30. So the area to the left of P30 is a small area, it is 0 0.30. This area to the left is 0 0.5. 0 0.30 is smaller than 0 0.5. So we must position the P30 somewhere over here so that the area to the left of P30 looks something like 0 0.30. Okay, so we've got that the area to the left of P30 is equal to 0 0.30. The standard deviation sigma is equal to 7. The mean mu is equal to 25. We can now work out P30. For example, to two decimal places using the inverse normal distribution function. So P30 to two decimal places is 21.33. Moving on to part C. Now we want to find the value of Q2. So we know that Q2 represents the median. By definition of the median, probability D is less than or equal to Q2 is equal to 0 0.5. Now, as before, we don't need the equal. Okay, I can illustrate the Q2 and the 0 0.5 on a bell-shaped curve. So here is my bell-shaped curve. Centered at the mean mu, which is 25. Okay, so what we have is that probability D is less than Q2 is equal to 0 0.5. Okay, so this area to the left of the center point is 0 0.5, which means that the mean mu 25 is precisely my median, Q2. Okay, so Q2 is equal to 25. It is also important to mention that because the normal distribution has a bell-shaped curve which is symmetrical, the mean is equal to the median which is equal to the mode. This condition is true for a normal distribution. This completes exam style question one. Moving on to exam style question two. The weights of bags of popcorn W grams produced by a factory are normally distributed with W takes on a normal distribution with mean 175 and variance 100. So we've got that the mean mu is equal to 175 the variance sigma squared is equal to 100, hence the standard deviation sigma is equal to the square root of 100, which is 10. Okay, find the 20% to 80% interpercentile range of masses. So we want to work out 20% to 80% interpercentile range. This is given by P80 minus P20. So let's start by working out P20. So P20 is the 20th percentile. By definition of the 20th percentile, we know that probability W is less than or equal to P20 is equal to 20%, in other words 0 0.20. We don't need the equal because for a normal distribution, equal contributes to zero area. We can delete that. Now I'm going to represent the P20 and the 0 0.20 on a bell-shaped curve. So here is my bell-shaped curve. Centered at the mean mu, which is 175. Now probability W is less than P20 is equal to 0 0.20. So the area to the left of P20 is a small area, it is 0 0.20. This area to the left is 0 0.5. 0 0.20 is less than 0 0.5. So we can position the P20 somewhere over here. So that the area to the left of P20 looks something like 0 0.20. So we have that the area to the left of P20 is 0 0.20. Sigma, the standard deviation is equal to 10. Mu, the mean is 175. We want to work out P20, the 20th percentile. So I'm going to calculate P20 to two decimal places using the inverse normal distribution function. So P20 is equal to 
eight to two decimal places. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and work out P80. So P80 is the 80th percentile. By definition of the 80th percentile, we know that probability W is less than or equal to P80 is equal to 80%, in other words, 0 0.80. Like I said before, we don't need the equal, so I can delete the equal. Now I'm going to represent the P80 and the 0 0.80 on a bell-shaped curve. So here is my bell-shaped curve. It is centred at the mean mu, which is 175. Probability W is less than P80 is equal to 0 0.80. So the area to the left of P80 is 0 0.80, which is a big area. We know that this area to the left is 0 0.5. 0 0.80 is more than 0 0.5. So we must position the P80 somewhere over here. So that the area to the left of P80 looks something like 0 0.80. Okay. So we've got the area to the left of P80 is equal to 0 0.80. The standard deviation sigma is equal to 10. The mean mu is equal to 175. We can now calculate P80, uh, the 80th percentile, using the inverse normal distribution function. So I'm going to calculate P80 to two decimal places. I get 183.42 to two decimal places. So I've got the P80, I've got the P20. Now I can calculate the 20% to 80% interpercentile range. So we've got that this is equal to P80, which is 183.42. Take away P20, which is 166.58. So if I subtract the two, my final answer is 16.84. So ladies and gents, that completes exam style question two and this teaching video 3.3, the inverse normal distribution function. If you found the video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a new teaching video.